any sense. Hey, everybody. Hello. Welcome to a live streaming edition of Hey Man. Hey Man. Hey Man. We are in Raleigh. Um, and uh, yeah, we thought we'd do one of these. Um, and on these live streams, we can take. Um, we can take, we can bring you on screen with us. Live questions. Yeah. So oh, awesome. I'm going to do that if I remember how to do it. Don't you copy that and then put that in the copy. All right. And then you put it in the, the comment thing. In the banner. In the banner? I, was, I thought you put it right there. And you oh, that's the right. And that's right. That's link. right. Hey, guys. Hey, so listen. I'm posting this in the chat side there. This is how you join us. Shelly says, show me your tits. Hilarious. This is how you join us on... Ooh, there you go. Yeah. You, you can't click on that, but if you copy and paste it, it's also in the chat. But this is how you would join us if you want to come on stream. Um, thank you very much. Love oh. from Syracuse. I appreciate it. Yeah, this is different, Robin. But um, yeah, so that, and, and we were uh, we were supposed to, you know, go into a studio today, like we had been doing for the last couple weekends. And the studio—that's my job, by the way—is to book the studio. So I booked the studio, and I thought I had it right. And then I texted them this morning. I go, "Hey, what's uh, what's your address? So we'll see you guys in a little bit." And she texts me an address from California in Los Angeles, and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait!" I searched up podcast studios in raleigh north carolina and i got yours in los angeles california and they were like yeah so are you, are you coming in today and i was like no i'm not coming in today i'm in north carolina and they were they sent me another follow-up and they were like so you so you want to cancel and i was like are you guys still asking me the same question I'm like yes we will not be in today i apologize for the uh for the uh inconvenience to them but also at the same time they still got paid half of the Deposit. There was a deposit, and remember that I told you there was a deposit. Wait, did I have to pay the studio in LA today because you booked the studio in LA? Uh -huh. I had to pay not the that? full price, not the full price, just half. How half. much was that? Seventy bucks. I'll send it back to you. Oh, will you? Yeah, I I, I have merch this weekend, so I yeah, I can give you seventy bucks back. I mean, yeah, it, it didn't work out well for me. You left that part out. <laughs> Not really. I told you. Remember, I took your card and was paying a deposit. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I mean the part that I where I had to pay this morning. Well, I'm glad that yeah, you. Well, you actually paid three days ago. So, huh? Remember when I told you I'm booking the podcast place and I need a card? Yeah. For a deposit. Yeah. Two days ago. Yeah. You paid two days ago, and you were gonna pay the other seventy when we showed up today. But hold on, one surprise! Second. I want to I want to delete this person and ban them. Hey man, listen. If you're spamming in the con in the comments, I'm just gonna block you. Okay. So oh, oh, we're just oh, not yeah. doing that shit. Yeah. Um. Hey. So listen. You owe me seventy dollars. Cool. Cool. Hey, for everybody, we're reading your comments. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um. We uh we're here in Raleigh. Um. I want to. Beautiful. Out it's here, beautiful. Right? I will tell you that the last. Three shows have been three of my favorite shows I've done in a long time. Yeah, last night was fun. Because yeah, I'm I'm not. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, he said that should help. <laughs> Thanks, Timothy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, that makes me laugh. Uh, what's going on, Michael Yo? How Michael you doing, dude? Yo. Um, oh. But last three nights, so I've been doing. I've been practicing this hour that I did for. I showcased, showcased. I showed to um, Netflix last week when I was in LA, and then um, and listen, I want to tell you something right now. I couldn't be any happier with the hour that I that I have, and I'll tell you something else. One way or the other, I don't give a fuck uh, what they decide. Yep. Uh, because I know that that hour is yeah. And guess what? Strong. It, it, you know, I, I like I like to get, bring up the. 
you know, the past of where we, you tried to get Father of the Year. And they were like, yeah. Yeah, man, that's why I don't care. Yeah, that's why 12 million views later, we like to break the difference. So uh, but, it doesn't matter. But because I do my, I'm doing my stand-up for the people who are here, right. not, not for the Netflix people. Right. And Tony Howell, yes, we are at Good Nights tonight, final two shows. Yeah. Weekend. And so, but these last three shows, I've been doing none of that material. And I really have just been going on stage with very little planned and just talking, trying to find... And the shows have been fucking fire. F fire. Yeah, last night was fun. Oh my God, dude. That I, I think I found a new story. I don't think I found. I found a new story that's like, I think it's going to end up being one of those long bangers. But it's so good because we used to live in this house that had lots of weird animal activity. And so we're doing all those animal stories between you what, getting what, bit by the snake. Oh, yeah. And I had a pet snake that I got bit by. Yeah, yeah, you getting bit by the snake, and you know the hamster in the backyard. Yeah, and the possums fucking up against the house. I got set up with that hamster just so you want. Yo, dude, we okay. That's all I want to say is I got set up. My wife and I, we uh, and hey everybody, hey listen, UK in the fall. I see a bunch of messages. Uh, UK in the fall. We were just in Louisville, Phoenix, um, and uh, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. But Louisville in the fall, uh, uh, UK in the fall, and just coming up next week, we're Tulsa, Arkansas, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Wichita, Kansas, and then, then we're in Michigan the week after. These, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So. Those dates are pretty much sold out. And then that first weekend in June, we just added Miami. Ow. So, you. We're going to Calle Ocho. Calle Ocho? Yeah. 8th Street? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, I want some. Cubano food so bad. Yeah, dude. Okay. I like – you know what I really appreciate is jumping in and out of the accent. Yeah, it's just for certain things. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to say – I'm not going to say Kale Ocho well, or Cubano. Yeah. Cubano. I, I wonder what's more – like in today's what's society, more racist me just what's more offensive to, huh, is saying Cubano or instead of Cuba, Cuban. I've been saying Cubano to people of, of – you know, of, of Cubano, of, of Cubano heritage, and they seem to love it. So. What Cubano people have you said Cubano to? Well, I had that one dude I was friends with for a little while who was who was uh, who was Cuban who lives in America. That one dude who I don't speak to anymore, um, and he would always say Cubano. He doesn't look Cuban. Let me just give you that uh, reminder. Yeah, but he would say Cubano because he's Cubano. Yeah, I, I'm trying to just be. You know, it's not not like culturally appropriate, right? But I'm trying to make sure I say the correct, you know, thing. Maybe that is cultural appropriation. But I don't know. It's not cultural appropriation. <laughs> By the way, like I, I'm on the I'm on the line about. Anyways, Cubano doesn't feel like you're culturally appropriating anything. It sounds That's like good. you're mispronouncing a word. But I'm not. You think Cubano is the way you're supposed to say it? Not the way I'm supposed to say it, but I'm white and I'm trying. That's point. what I'm saying. Right, so but just I'm, say I'm, Cuban. I'm, nah, it's Cuban's not. I don't know. I don't like Cuban. I don't like just saying Cuban. I think Cubano is fun. <laughs> That's why. So, you know, if I got to be blatantly honest, I'm going to stick oh, with Okay. Yeah, I'm going to stick well, with what I've been doing. Yeah, dude, I'm not also, saying you're yeah, not no, supposed I, to. Yeah, I would just no. like to hear from a Cubano I them, have, themselves. Hey, you know, if there's any in there who want to you know, back me up or not. By the way, I love this. Somebody just said, uh, I'm going to rip this DMT and enjoy the vibes. So listen, guys, the uh, I'm going to start putting your comments up here that we find. And so, uh, please, here, hold on one second. We just sent them. Hilarious. Reminds me of how Jacob thought he could speak, speak the Spanish, Spanish. Yeah, as a kid. It's, That's kind right. of, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's kind of the same vibe. It's exactly the same thing. Do Cubano. It's kind of the same vibe. Yeah. I would like to hear from somebody who is Spanish on the thread and please tell me. Uh, if I'm being offensive or not. Yeah. Not offensive, dude. I think, look, man. You said offensive and I said racist earlier, so I'm choosing offensive over racist. It's neither. I'm going to say this. Look, and I strongly believe this. If you get offended by something, it's your choice. It's your choice how you want to take something. That's true. Yo, dude, I remember in South Carolina once, after a show, uh, and um, this guy came up to me, and he was with his buddies, and uh, he was like, uh, 
my friends dared me to call you this. I'm like, oh no. Jeez. Here it comes. Because, you know, I'm Jewish, right? And he goes, they didn't think I'd like, you'd like it if I called you a kite. Now, the correct slang term is kike with a K. Did he call you a kite? He called, me a, called me a kite with a T. Like the one you fly on the beach? Yeah, dude. He said, I hope you're not offended. I'm like, not at all. I'm not not offended. I know what you I'm not offended at all by you calling me a kite. But I also would not have been offended by him calling me a kike because that's his problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to let some nameless, faceless. No, oh, that scared the uh, shit out of me. Outside. <laughs> I'm not going to let some nameless, faceless. Like, if I felt threatened physically, but like, I'm too old. You call me a kite or a kike. I don't. That shit. I, I don't know him. I, I don't know that person. Yeah. Yeah. So well, their opinion of me means yeah. absolutely nothing. You I just want to bring everybody into the loop. A small moth uh, flew up to the outside of our window and landed within our eyesight. And I think my dad thought it was inside. I almost shit myself. <laughs> he got really scared. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I don't like random bugs flying up to me. That is something like flying up to me. Like, hey, man. But they're like, you know. You know when the, when the moth, when a random moth hits your neck, I punch myself in the face like eight times. I'm like, Gah! you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not. It's like when you that. walk into a cobweb. The cobweb is so awful. Yeah, but the moth, I feel like I'm being attacked. And now, so I start to throw fucking Well, the fists. cobweb, I feel like I'm being attacked too because it starts in one place and then it ends up like, like you're here and then you're like, I want to get it off. And then you try to take it off and then it ends up here and then you take it off there and then it ends up on the other side of your face. And it's just like it, – it's a whole lot of anger. Yeah, you know, confusion. you know what else is bad? When it gets caught in your beard and so you think you get it all off and you walk like, you know, another five minutes and you forget about the cobweb. And, and you then, something else on your neck. Yeah, and then like a catch light catches it and you see it and you think it's something else and you punch yourself in the face again. That's just you. I don't think so. I As think of right now it's just you because I didn't have a beard until two years ago. So That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, it's true. What is your favorite place? Run the comments. We're so far behind. I'm answering this. Oh, oh, oh. What is the favorite place to do stand up? Are you coming to Ohio? Yeah, we're coming to Columbus when? When are we back in Seabus in the winter? Last time we were in Seabus, uh, it was snowing. It's in my, it's, uh, it should be on my page, everybody. We're coming back to Columbus. Readingjoshua.com. Uh, what is my favorite place to do stand up? I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I really don't. I, I have some. I have like some like a top five cities. I got. I think uh, I got like but a top I don't, three. You do have a top three? At least, yeah. I really enjoyed Portland. Yeah, uh, it's Portland a good time. this past year. I'm not gonna lie. Portland Fuck. for me this past fall was the first time. Like for me, like it kind of felt like a rock star moment. Oh yeah, dude, they love you. They were. They were really. That was a really good crowd. I remember walking out, and I was like. And I just screamed, I just screamed Portland, and it was like a, yeah, it was that. So Portland gave me my very first, like, rock star feeling moment. So Portland always yeah. has a top in the city uh, city rankings. We love Denver. Denver is yep, always. picked two of my top five already. Yeah, Denver is always a whole bunch of fun. Yeah. I guess I could try and do a top five. No, uh, This isn't any particular order, by the way, guys. This is just me thinking off the top of my head. Um Boston is always that's in mind. Crazy love. Yep, that's in it. You're um, nailing it. You, what else you got? Fuck, man. We had I had so much fun in Australia. Like, but we've only done it once. That or I've only done it once. That's yeah. why it's hard for me to put that in uh, in the top five. We're coming to Denmark. We'll see you in the fall. In the fall, guys. We're doing England, uh, Ireland, Scotland. We're is going. Scotland on there? To oh yeah, we're going to Denmark, Denmark, Sweden, Sweden. Amsterdam, and it no yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you said I will not forget you said Amsterdam yeah, and yeah, as yeah. the the weed smoker I am not going to forget that that's right to Amsterdam so and so my top five cities would be to do stand up I like Chicago I like Portland I like Denver I like Boston. I am in between on Austin. Yeah, Austin's fun. And Seattle, but I'm going Austin. I haven't done Seattle with you, and I haven't done Chicago with you. So I don't. I've been to Chicago with you for a tour, but I was 16 at the time. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, yeah, and I left you in the hotel room. Yeah, because they, they let, no. 
He left me in the hotel room because the club wouldn't let me in the green room. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah. you're not old enough. I was like, I'm the fucking, I'm the headliner's son. And they were like, tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't doing that at all. It was crazy to me. They're like, you could sit in the crowd. And I was like, no. I'll sit in the crowd. Hey, Jacob Wolf just made I'm going to fight you so hard t-shirts. t-shirts. I did make I'm going to fight you so hard t-shirts. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend, my beautiful girlfriend did a design for them. Uh, I do not have, do I have one with me? No, they're at the club. Yeah. Um, so if you see us on the road soon, hopefully you guys will be able to grab one. It's my very first batch of anything. So I love coming to Canada to do stand up. But part of what I would say is uh, what adds to the city is being able to go outside and walk around. It's and cold. since you can really only do that for 37 days in Canada, none of them, I love performing there and the crowds are ridiculous. But I went to Winnipeg and it was like minus Three. something. Yeah, that, that was the weekend I forgot my passport. Anytime you get to minus something, I, I'm out. out. O U T, outskate. Yeah. So, but I, and I love performing in Vancouver too. So, Wait, yeah. That was a good question. But me. go ahead, guys, and ask questions in the was, comments and then we'll get to you. It was a really good question for me. It was a good question for me. So, yeah. Okay, just put it up in there. Yep. Hey, Josh, would you read that? Yeah, I, was, I can't read that. I, know, I was trying to see if you could. I almost did the hey, old just, man. Yes. Hey, Josh, I was wondering. Uh, I'm a new parent, and as a parent, do you have any advice to make nights easier other than smoking? It only does so much. Okay, when you say easier, I just don't have a good idea of what you mean by easier. Do you mean once the kids go to sleep or they're still awake? Um, I, so I don't have, I, here's what I would say, man. Once the kids go to sleep, uh, a hit or two off that joint ain't going to hurt anybody. And it's nice to kind of relax a little bit. I tried, not tried. I just wasn't high around the kids when they were awake. True. Most of the time. No, I, when they got a little older, I was. So I got to high school. But when they were kids, and I'll tell you why. I think I'm pretty functional high, but if something had gone down, even if it wasn't my fault, if something had gone down and I was high, I would have never forgiven myself. If something had gone down and I wasn't in a situation where I had all my faculties, even if it wasn't my fault, and even if I handled it, I would have felt terrible. So I just never, but once they went to sleep, all bets were off. True. You know, um, I love coming to Jacksonville, Jackie. Uh, but that was my, that was just always my thing. So listen, guys, we have, um, uh, we have some people down below who joined us. Now, listen, these are, these, if you have questions, please pop on the screen. If you don't have questions, even if you're an OG and, and uh, we've seen you a, a, a gazillion times before. If you don't have questions, don't pop on the screen. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. When are you guys coming back to Australia? Probably a year. But let's just start. You guys ready? We'll go down below and we'll get a question. John, I'm coming to you, my man. What's going on, dude? What's going on, boys? How are y'all? Well, are you good? Doing great, man. Uh Hey, in fact, when you when y'all popped on live, I was like, "Wow, I'm even wearing the right shirt today." Yeah, you are, man. Well, well. <laughs> so tell me something, John. What do you got for us today? Yeah, you know, uh, last time I saw you live, you actually brought this up, but you know, for the larger audience, I'd be curious to hear about uh, maybe your top weird story from one of your shows. I mean, obviously, we all know the. The, the drunk chick, we've all seen the video, <laughs> but, but, uh, listen, last night I'm going to take, I'm going to release a video. I'm so glad I was recording last Golly. night. So there was a man and a woman in the front row and about 15, 10, 15 minutes into my set, the dude got up and went to the bathroom and she was sitting there by herself. Yeah, Shannon, the finger banger too was good too. The finger <laughs> was good. All, it was all good. The the guy who got caught cheating with another woman in the front row also good. <laughs> but so 
Uh, I um, we want to get through this one. Uh, the guy gets up, and she's still sitting there. And so I notice at one point he's just standing over in the wings. And she's waving to him, and he's just doing this. Not having it. So I'm like, uh, "What are you coming back?" And he kept going, uh-huh. shrugging his shoulders. He kept going. I was like, "Are you? But you are you coming back?" And he kept shrugging his shoulders, right? And uh, I was like, "So why aren't you coming back? Are you guys fighting?" And he was like, "No." And I was like, "Okay." And I, I honestly, I was like, "Are you farting? Are you being nice to the rest of the audience?" That which honestly, look, dude, you get up to a fart, you go in the corner, and you come back, which is a human thing. Yeah. He was like, "No." And um, it was just a really weird, so I kind of let it go. And she was just sitting there covering her eyes like this, which was weird. And then about, I don't know, 30 minutes later, she she's in the front row. She abruptly stands up and starts to walk on stage. She catches her back foot, her back left foot. Look, you know, I'll, drunk people, I'm sorry for saying this. But drunk people, like, you know, their feet get lazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a drunk person's foot, it, it's like a Bell Palsy lip. It, get, it drags behind a little bit, you know? And so her a little body, Frankenstein-like. Yeah, her foot was doing this. It, had, it wasn't doing this coming over the stage. It was doing this. And it caught. And she fell like a t- – drunk people also, they fall like toddlers. They don't put their hands out. You know what I'm saying? They just fall <laughs> fucking face first. So she fell. Dude, I saved her. Did I save her face? Yeah. I saved her did. face. First of all, everybody caught her with one arm. This one. Don't caught her. That. This right here? You don't like it when no. I do that? Does this make you unhappy? So. <laughs> Jeff just gets a little uncomfortable there, Jacob. <laughs> I know when I flex in front of him. Yeah, all I have to do is tickle him now and he stops. Yeah, but not like this. What? So, okay. Do you want me to bounce my pet? So don't do that. I don't like it when you rub my nipple. Yeah, so don't. so um, yeah, that makes me really uncomfortable. <laughs> you can do it to yourself, but when someone else does it, there's a fucking problem. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. I'm just I'm standing. Wait, by the way, when you said that, you made it sound like I was the weird one. No, no, yeah. I, no. I mean, that was just a general statement. For oh yeah, 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 yeah. No. So I catch her. She's gonna fucking face stumble. Catch her, and then she stands up and starts to walk off stage into the crowd into the darkness i'm like no 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 no. i'm like the the way off stage is this way meanwhile her husband who watched her almost lose all of her teeth is just just standing there watching doing nothing it turns out because it was a ramp to get down to the stage he was so drunk he didn't think he could make it down the ramp yeah <laughs> He didn't think the reason he wasn't coming back is he didn't think he could make it down the ramp yep. without fucking face tumbling. So he had decided no. to watch the rest of the show from the top of the ramp. Yep. And somehow no. she had decided, well, it's time for me to get up and go. And almost did a fucking face diggity right into the Yeah. I was a hero last night. Man, that, that's some functional drunk right there, if you think about it. He, he's aware enough that he can't walk. A ramp. <laughs> yeah. He was responsible, but her back left foot was not. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Brutal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about that dude in Australia? Like that weird. So we, when we just did our Australia tour in January, also, um, this guy came up to us after a show and was like, "I know you like weird shit. Do you guys want to see something weird?" And both him and I were like, "I don't know if I want to answer that truthfully." You know what I'm saying? Like neither of us wanted to know. <laughs> like we wanted to know, but. I didn't want to know that bad because we were in Australia, so I still had no idea what the fuck was going to happen. And both of us were like, sure. And the dude sticks his hand in his pants. And I was like, oh, no. And out of his pants, he pulls a giant, giant furry tarantula. Nope, fuck that. <laughs> like, didn't I just fully reach a hand in there and pulled it out? We were like, what? Yeah. why? Like, why? What's, what's the point? <sighs> And the guy said he likes to go for rides. And I was like, fuck no, he doesn't. You like the feeling of eight weird little hairy fingers on your dick. Um, by the way, strange. Honestly, I thought it was weird. And then I was probably like, he's probably on to something. 
<laughs> because eight furry fingers on your dick. Um, I mean, someone's missing your fingers, so, so I'm good. Someone? Well, who's got furry fingers? No, I'm just saying, like, if you're a regular person and it's eight fingers, someone's missing two fingers. And they have furry fingers. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> problems That's my point. And What's weirder, that you're missing two fingers or your fingers are furry? Maybe they're just not using the thumbs. I mean, that, that you know, there's that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, I, I think they're both weird, for sure. All right, John, thanks, yeah. man. I appreciate yeah. it. Hey, thanks, guys. We'll see you when you get back to Dallas. All right, so, appreciate it. Yeah, that, I mean, who farts the best? Great question. Wait, you, there was a question we were on, and you wanted to answer, and then you were with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. It was the, uh, I forgot. Yeah, it was. Oh, 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 what was oh. the question? It was. Uh, it was. Uh, tell us a story about one of the first times you ever smoked weed or something like that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta go find it. That's okay. I wanna know. Um, why don't I you go know. first? Can you show? It's okay. There it is, right there. It's right okay. there. Um, why don't you go first? Tell us a story about the first time smoking weed. Love all your stuff. Um, you got some real good sets. All right, well, we really appreciate that, Jake. I like your name, also. Good name. Um. The first time – I can remember the first time I actually ever smoked weed. Um, you can't? I can. Oh. That's what I said. Yeah. I've smoked a lot of weed since then, so it would be, I wouldn't be surprised if I couldn't remember. Um, so I was 14. I was a freshman in high school, and I had asked a friend. I was like, yo, an older – like my sister, you know, Caitlin still lived at the house. Yeah. So I asked her for a friend of hers' phone number, and then I asked him because I knew he smoked weed for his dealer's phone number, right? And he was like, sure. And so I had it. And not going to lie, when I first bought it, I didn't know what to do with it. I had it sitting in a drawer for like two and a half weeks because I felt like I was like almost too nervous to go out and do it or I didn't know what was going to happen. And it was like still like all very new and experimental for me. Yeah. So one day you were out of town and Caitlin and her boyfriend at the time were watching it. And I was like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite over a friend. And she was like, okay. And I invited over the phone number I got, the, the friend of hers. And she was like, what is he doing? Here? And I was like, we're just hanging out. No big deal. And I was like, all right, we're going um, to we're gonna go to 7-Eleven and grab some snacks, which was – it started out as my you know, excuse code to for smoke smoking weed, weed. And it was my code for smoking weed all the way through high school. Yeah. Like even he knows that. Also, he started using that later on just so he could make me go get snacks for him from 7-Eleven. That's true. Um, when he was high. So – and I was like, yeah, we're just going to go on a quick walk. And she goes, and this always makes me laugh. She goes, I'm uh, I'm making lunch. I'm making some Alfredo. Do you want some? And both me and him were like, we're like, no, nah, we're not right now. And then he looks at me and he goes, well, I'm kind of hungry. And I go, we'll be more hungry when we come back. And he was like, what? And I go, the whole reason you're here is to help me smoke weed for the first time, dude. So we walked out. We went down to the L.A. River, which is. Did you get high the first time you smoked weed? Nah, yes, yes, but not like as high the second time. I, 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 the first time I smoked weed, dude, I was 14. But weed when I was growing up was oregano. It wasn't oregano, but it might as well be compared to what we're smoking now. Here's how you can tell when I was growing up, you know what the name of the weed we bought was? Weed. Like there was no like crazy Alaskan Thunderfuck. No, it wasn't. There was no crazy names. It was just called weed. Yeah. And it was all the same kind of dirty. It came with seeds and stems and like every now and then like, you know, a wrapper of some kind. It was so weird, not as good. But like, that's why when I tell my friends now, when they're like, I'm going to start smoking weed again, I'm like, this is a bad idea for you. You're used to weed from like the 90s. This is not, this weed's going to punch you right in the dick, man. You don't, this is not for you. Yeah. Um, I like this question. That, and thanks for asking, Jake, that Jesse asked. And then we're going to get to another person and bring him on screen. And hey what's it like to go on tour but with your dad? It, is it easy to get past the dad part? He seems like he could be cool. Hilarious, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, you know, he, he's cool sometimes, except for the fact that he makes me do certain things while we're on the road that I don't like to do. That's, uh, you might have explained that. Uh, I'm okay. going to let people think about it how they want to think about it. But like today and yesterday – Oh, yesterday, he made me do cryotherapy, which is where you stand in a chamber where it's negative 160 degrees. We're going back to And you sit that. there for three minutes, and it's terrible. And he's making me do it again today. But Tell him get, why I'm making you do it. Because he hates me. No. Um, <laughs> he's doing it because he wants me uh, to be able to do things that I'm uncomfortable with and push my have my brain push my body to a different limit, which, you know, I, I'm okay with because I got to be honest, I don't do that enough for myself. So it's nice to have somebody else who is pushing me to do that. Um, 
he also makes me go to the gym every day. He also makes me eat a certain way while we're on the road. That's why when I go home, the first thing I eat is McDonald's. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but it's it's it is cool, man. Like, is other, it the first thing you eat? No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, absolutely. Um, but you know, it, it is definitely cool to be able to do something like this with my dad. Um, except for the fact also that he makes me share a hotel room with him. He's officially named this tour one room, two beds. Um, cause I voluntarily am not allowed to have my own hotel room, um, which is fine. You know, whatever. Sure. I get paid more at the end of the weekend. So that's, I love that's torturing fine. him. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah You're yeah. so lucky. I didn't do it this morning. I was, cause you slammed the door again on your way out when you woke up. And I thought about doing what I wanted to do, but did I slam the door? Well, also this door slams hard. Like yeah. this door is like yeah, yeah, yeah. is light, so it, it 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 runs through it fast. Um, but yeah, it, it it is a it is really cool being able to do something like this uh, with my dad. It also I'm not gonna lie, it gives me uh, a little more confidence going on stage, uh, or it did when I was you know first trying to figure it out, having somebody up there uh, who I trusted and I knew could dig me out of a situation if I needed one. Uh, was always a nice little helpful uh, uh, thought to have in the back of my back of my brain, um, but it is definitely a whole bunch of fun. We get to do things that a lot of father sons don't, so it is definitely a good time. And he seems like he could be cool. Yeah, you know. Every sometimes, now and then. sometimes I'm making you get into cryo. Yeah, I get to pick the song today. By the way, uh, he picks. He picked. You know what I picked yesterday? Tell him. He picked Kelly Clarkson yesterday. He picked Did Not. Oh, what a great song. Did not give you everything. You got the best of me, baby. You're supposed to go, baby. Did, did, did not. Yeah, it's Anywho. a fucking great song. Hey, no, it's not a bad song. We love it's Kelly Clarkson. Great, oh, I love Kelly love Clarkson. Clarkson. Um, Fuck yeah. I was yeah. going to pick a song that he really didn't like today. Um, uh, My girlfriend uh, has. We're not listening to some screamo. We can't do it. That was what I was going to do. It's a song by a band called Sleeping with Sirens called If You Can't Hang. Uh, it's from a while ago. My I used to be in an emo phase, uh, and so did my brother and my sister. I think my brother's still in it. Um, but my girlfriend is also – she was the token emo kid at her school. You think your brother is still in his emo phase? Have you checked the music he listens to? Your brother, the Army veteran? Is in his emo phase? The one who used to have snake bites and still has small gauges in his ears? Used to. Still has small gauges in his ears? Yeah, And the music he listens to? Yo, I hope he's on the stream right now. I hope Yo, he is. Trev, if you're on the stream, man. Hey, man, I'm not, I'm not talking shit. I'm talking facts. And a Sounds. Fact, and a fact is a fact, and that's a fact. I got that from RuPaul's Druggers. A fact is a fact. And, and that's a fact. That sounds like, so that's like a Winnie the Pooh shit. I got it from this, I got it from RuPaul's Drag Race. I got to be honest. Someone I can tell uh, a queen said it on there, and it's stuck. I like it. Fact is a fact, and, and that's, that's a, a fact. fact. I mean, yeah, dude. I guess so. Not I guess so. That is relevant and makes sense. All right. Um, but yeah. Uh, but I'm picking. Uh, sorry, we were on the song that I was picking for us oh, today. Oh yeah. Um, so it's not going to be Sleeping with Sirens. It's going to be Burning Up by the Jonas Brothers. I'm burning up, burning up. But it's not the right song. That's not it. No. Why wow, Ray Ray, you're shaking your head. Yeah, that's Ray Ray's. That's, no, not, that's no. not the song. What, what is that? The Pointer Sisters? Is that what I was I don't singing? Know what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it wasn't the Jonas Brothers. How do you do like that? I'm gonna move my shoulders like that. You're gonna pull a muscle. No, 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 no. You gotta keep it right in here. There's no muscle pulling in here. I'm actually moving everything all at once. By the way, Jessica says, not gonna lie, I'd be happier to see a furry spider come out of some dude's pants than something else furry. I would disagree with that. Whoa, 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 whoa pause. He, she's talking about nuts. Or... That, I know. That's why I said pause because you said I disagree, saying you'd rather like to see some dude's hair and nuts than a spider. I would at least expect to see the nuts come out of the pants. <laughs> I've seen nuts before. I'm not – listen, dude. Here's, I'm gonna tell that's you, a technical foul. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, that is a fucking tech. I'm going to tell you something right now. <laughs> get I'm, get a grown, I'm a grown person. <laughs> get out. You take your nuts out. I'm Look, it's, here's the thing. You know I like things that are weird, right? So like another human's nuts is more than weird. Dude, if you're walking down the street with your nuts out, I need to know why. No. I'm yo, just like if tits are out, if nuts are out, I'm looking. I'm looking. No. No. I'm looking. 
if I'm not some dude if nuts are out, you if wouldn't, I, if you I wouldn't saw, notice if some dude's nuts oh, were out. I would notice. But okay, I'm not going back to look that well, his I'm nuts are out. Going back to look. It sounds like you wanted. You know, no, that, not, was, that sounds like what it was in your area. I'm not going back to look, but if the nuts are out, I'm looking. I'm not going back to look at the spider either. But if a dude has his nuts out in the meet and greet line, it's at least a good story. I'm, and I'm it's not, also an arrest because that is a felony. Yeah, listen, people are too touchy about. That. No, I here's you deal. Should, I'm, I'm warning any of you right now, including you. Let me tell you something right now. If you come to the meet and greet line and your nuts are out, we're taking a picture. Arrested. Arrested. We're taking a picture straight together. Straight to jail. I'm not taking my nuts out. Straight to jail. But we're taking a picture together. Straight to jail. Let those brains hang. You can take a picture with my dad in handcuffs. Yeah, straight to jail. Just straight, straight to we'll fucking call jail. call that picture Dingle Dang. I don't have a problem with it. I question. Does he have to have a pair of handcuffs around his nuts too? No, you're not getting arrested. I'm, uh, I'm posting not it. by him. I will have you arrested. Are you doing a citizen's arrest? Fuck yeah. Do not show up with your nuts out to a meet and greet. I will pull out handcuffs. That shit doesn't bother. I, listen, I'm very secure with myself and who I oh, am. Oh, I'm secure too, but I'm so like, if I you want to. Daryl's got handcuffs. If you, if you want to. <laughs> look, if you want to have your nuts out or if you want to take your baby bird out for the picture, that's up to you. You know what I mean? No. Nope. Just make sure before when you leave, you put a, your baby bird back in the nest. But or like, keep it there. Please, yeah, and thank I'm you. I'm not encouraging it. I'm just saying that I don't care. That sounds like you're encouraging it. I don't it. care. That was a straight encouragement. I don't care. You said if you wanted to come out and yeah, have your nuts out, you should fine. do it. That is encouragement. But by the way, I That can't... is feeding the fire. You're like Kermit with the fucking hood on. And it's like, don't do that. And you're like, do but it. What does that mean? What reference is Kermit with the hood on? You've never seen that meme where it's like regular Kermit is like, oh, I shouldn't do this. And then he turns around and it's Kermit with like a hood on. And he's like the Sith Lord. And he's like, do it. Like he's like a bad influence. Who the fuck is Kermit? The frog? Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> what is happening here? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just supposed what, to know what you What other think. Kermit is there that I would be referring I, to? I have a friend of mine who I started comedy with named Kermit Shepio, uh, who's a stand-up comic. Do you yeah. actually a stand-up comic named Kermit? Yep. Kermit, Kermit the comic? <laughs> I never, I never thought of Kermit the comic, but Kermit, wow. it's the first thing I thought of. Kermit Appio is a very funny comic who lives in Seattle. Uh, Kermit the comic is fucking. I'd go see that <laughs> for sure. Kermit I would for sure the go comic. See Kermit the comic. Right, right. You know what I'm talking about with the I'm Kermit gonna, meme, right? With fucking, the in the hood. Okay, cool. Look, I just man. Make sure I'm not speaking into air at this point because this dude's a I'm thousand. I'm dying. I, I was missed. born in 1876. He never gets any of my references. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm pointing at you. Mr. Uh, wants to see a baby bird at the meat creed. I don't want to see the baby bird. Shout yeah, with. But if it ends up flying out of the nest into the meet and greet, we'll take a picture. I will not be in that photo. See, now here's another thing. New man says, next show in Australia, a picture with you holding my nuts. No, I'm not touching the nuts. See, this is what happens when you encourage people. Okay? I'm not this, even... is, this is what happens when you bring this stuff to light, people. How, people... Do, I, how do you join the live? Hold on a second. Let me get you guys in here. Ray, right, help me. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know where to go from here, guys. Here you go. If you want to join the live, here's the link right here. I just put it in the chat. It's right there. Um, there embrace the weird or not? <laughs> listen, am I am I way off? Yes. For anything, whatever you're about to say, yes. Like, why do I care if someone's nuts are out? As long as they're not. You don't lying. care, but you are opening that door, Thank and you. that's what my question was going to be. What is your weirdest fan interaction? Ooh, I've had some now weird. it's gonna be balls out. <laughs> yeah, now it's gonna be just a line of dudes with their nuts out. Listen, That's dude, crazy. that would be amazing. I Are will you be leaving that me? meeting early. To the window. <laughs> so, right, right. So drop down all of their balls. Let like, me what? Let me ask you a question, okay? When you say the weirdest encounter in a meet and greet, can you be more specific? Where I felt the most uncomfortable. The, the funniest, like, can you, can you, because I want like to Like where you, you felt the most uncomfortable and what was the funniest? It's hard to make him feel uncomfortable, so I don't even know. <laughs> well, yeah, he wants balls out. You know? <laughs> to you right now, you ready? So weird does not make me uncomfortable, okay? True. But my safety does. Yep. Okay. And so I... Uh, there's a woman who said, will you autograph my arm? And I was like, yeah. Armless. And uh, I autographed her arm. She goes, I'm getting that tattooed. 
I'll show you next time I see you tomorrow. And I was like, oh, well, this is, you know, it was a Saturday. It was the last, it was the last shows. And I go, oh, yeah, but I'm not going to be here tomorrow. She goes, but I know where, I know where you're staying. And I was like, what? Excuse me? She goes, yeah, yeah, I know where you're staying. Oh. She goes, I know where you're staying. There's only like three or four hotels in the city where I thought you'd stay. And I found the one you're at. And I Yikes. was like, uh, I would see I would Again, be, straight to jail. Danger. danger. Straight much, to jail. I would much rather have four dudes with their nuts out than that. Well, I, yeah, I'm changing my room tonight. <laughs> oh, dude. Straight up. You know what else? You know what else helped me once? And I love going to small towns and I love how people. Look, I try to make myself accessible and like, right? Yeah. But there was, I showed up at this hotel and um, do you remember in Portland when the dude at the front desk came up and knocked on our door? Were you with me? Wait, what? The guy at the front desk, he came up and knocked on the door after I came home from a late show. Oh yeah, and asked if he could, it was like, he asked for a photo or an autograph yeah. after we'd come back from a show and he worked at the hotel. He walked up and it yeah. was like midnight and he was like, I knew that was you. Can I get a photo? I I'm like, do remember what? That. He came to your room? He used his, his I want to say power because it's the power that he had to look up what room he was staying in How and about came this? up to our room. I was in New Mexico, right? Was and I check weird. into this hotel and I get a phone call in the hotel room and I go, hello. And um, I hear, hey, this is Catherine. How you doing? I go, I don't know. Nope. Nope. Like, who's, who's Catherine? Catherine? Yeah. And she goes, oh, I'm working at the front desk. Hey, where can I get some cheap tickets for tonight's show? And I was like, what? She was like, well, I don't want to pay full price. And I was like, okay, Catherine. In order to find tickets, comedian wow. I was like, Catherine, you should not be calling me. Yeah, no. And she was like, no, no, no. I go, you shouldn't be calling me. And she goes, no, no, it's Catherine from the front desk. I go, that's, yeah, yeah I know. I don't I, care. Like, that makes it worse. Why are you calling me? Yeah. What about, what, okay, this this one didn't make me feel uncomfortable, but it was a little strange. When we were in Australia, so like, just so you know, like at the airports from Australia, there's like, you can walk up to the gate, right, with no boarding pass. You can't do that in the States anymore, right? No. You used to, but you can't yeah. do it anymore because, you know, obvious. I'm not going to say why. But 9 11? Yeah. Yeah. But Australia <laughs> didn't have a 9 11, right? So their security airport, airport security, by the way, the best airports, fastest, quickest, like well, Australia yeah. and New Zealand were a fucking breeze. Even international was so easy to get through. It was awesome. <laughs> but we're about to get on a plane, and I think we're still in Australia, and we're getting on a plane. And right as we're about to board, a woman comes up to us, and she's sitting there waiting. With a sharpie and a piece of paper, and she goes, "Hey, hello, like hi, I'm a fan. Like, could you guys sign this?" And I go, "Yeah, like, I, sure." Oh, you yeah, I knew you guys were flying out today, and I missed the, I, you know, I missed the show, but I looked up where you guys were going next, and there were only two flights going out today, so I just guessed which one. Yeah. So that yeah, it's gotta be weird when they're waiting. You know, that one was a little creepy for me, and I was like, I mean, it's really nice of you. Like, she wasn't creepy at all. She was super sweet, and all she wanted was a photo and an autograph. And I was like, cool, that's. Totally fine, but weird. I'm Def so definitely a little strange to just walk up like, oh, I'm boarding a plane. And someone's like, I've been waiting for you. And I'm like, yeah, what? So I'll tell you what. And Ray Ray, always so good to see you. I'll be in Denver this see week. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye. I will tell you, um, I, I always assume the best instead of the worst of people. So I... To me, it's always super humbling when people are waiting for you, or and so I, I try to, and I was that was weird to me too. I was just, that, right? I was just like surprised, like. But then I, I always try to be like, well, listen, this person left their fucking yeah, house 100%, to come see me. One hundred percent at the airport. You know I mean? Random airport. Yeah, yeah, and she was super sweet. She was super sweet, and super nice, and yeah. very respectful. Uh, Ma'am, I don't remember your name, but if you do see this or you are watching. Oh, she's probably outside the front door. <laughs> uh, do y'all ever come to West Virginia? I go wherever they book. Um, by the way, Kelly in Austin, let me tell you something. This barbecue, Terry Black's barbecue, best best barbecue out there. This, this next sentence out of context is going to sound strange. Ready? That is the best plate of meat you will get anywhere. That was my nickname in high school. Plate, plate of meat? meat? Yeah. Bummer. So Why is that a bummer? Somebody said, hey, from Glasgow. Hey, Glasgow, we will see you in the fall. Yeah, we're coming, right? man. We're coming to you. I can't wait. Yeah. Ah! 
Um, geek out to go to London for a tour. What does that say? Uh, I'm coming to meet and greet, but I'm pimping my sack out uh, with like a fake tattoo, tree air freshener, or some spinner rims. Yo, dude, if you had an air freshener hanging off your nutsack for the meet and greet, straight to jail. Yo, yeah, dude, what are you talking about? You're right to my IG story. Straight to kidding? jail. Straight to jail. Jacob's putting you in jail. I'm, straight to I'm jail. putting you on TikTok. Right away. Straight you, to jail. You know what I'm saying? You will get banned on TikTok if you put his nuts on TikTok. Not if I put in a smiley emoji over it. Straight to jail. If I put a smiley. See, see, what, see what kind of door you opened? I swear to God, from now on, it's just going to be the people. The nut door? It's going to be people with fake prosthetic nuts hanging out of there. Yo, a, a fucking Marky Mark, Boogie Nights. Um, or like the jackass, like dick? the jackass one, where they have like the really long nuts. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Like if you show up with prosthetic nuts, different story. But if your real nuts are out, straight to jail. Uh, not a question. Uh, listen, I I haven't I haven't quite yet decided how I feel about this, but I think we're gonna be okay. This guy's a Jennifer Anderson for me. I remember this guy. We were talking about um, if couples if they had hall passes. And, you know, guys were mentioning who their hall pass was. And let me tell you, everybody, what the difference between a woman's hall pass and a man's hall pass. And the, 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 the difference is this. For the woman, she knows it's fantasy, and she might think about that dude while she's fucking you, but she understands that it's fantasy. For a guy, in the very back of his head, every guy's like, there's a shot. If I saw Jennifer Aniston on a Tuesday night at Applebee's, she might fuck me. And let me tell you, it is in the back of every dude's head. I've got to maybe Scarlett Johansson. If I played it out, yeah, he's shaking his head because he's right. Zero chance. Zero percent. Not a fucking like, shot. This isn't the movie Long Shot with no. Seth Rogen. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, no, there's no – this isn't a, a storyline. This isn't a movie plot, okay? This is real life. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston is not noticing you at the Starbucks and going, you know that dude who made my coffee? And definitely not noticing you. I had a great ass. Like, also, this is not definitely happening. not noticing you at an Applebee's. You know why? She's why not, the fuck is she stepping foot into an Applebee's? Not okay. Let's just, let me just put it that way. Uh, if you're saying that you think you're going to see Jennifer Aniston at an Applebee's on a Tuesday night, my friend, pick a different hall pass because you're so far off, I can't even begin to explain. Susan, I'm on board for the emoji over the nuts. Whose nuts smell like pine tree? Your nuts smell like a pine tree? Is that the same guy who said he put an air freshener over his nuts? I hope so. Uh, Ryan, we were just in Utah, man. We had a great time. We were in Salt Lake. Yeah, we had a really great time. Thank you, It was cold. Good Lord. Um, Marcus, thank you for repeating a decade-old joke. Get better. Do better. Do, yeah. do do better. I like how I also called Tosh Point oh, and didn't even give him his actual name. Yeah, but do better, man. You know what I'm saying? Do better. Do where are we still doing the Tosh jokes? That's do better. A little much. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we're all here, and I like insults, and I don't mind being joked at, but do better. Yeah. Come on, swinging, dude. Shit. Uh, we go to – did we go to the Oregon coast? I don't think so. Uh, we don't go to the Oregon coast, but I have stayed in Yahats, Oregon for a couple nights. Yahats? Yeah. Yahats, Oregon. That's where they filmed uh, the Goonies. Yahatsi? Nope. Yahats? Yahats. Did yeah. you ever play Yahatsi? Yeah. We did. A lot. Girl. Didn't we? Yeah. Did I scream Yahatsi in your face? Yeah. Just like not going to lie, when I was 16, we went on a family road trip to Joshua Tree with some buddies of mine. And we were sitting there, and we had brought a bunch of board games. And, oh, no, there were a bunch of board games at the house that we were staying at. And he looks me up, and he looks at me, and I'm, like, yeah. handing out all of these board games. And he looks at one board game, and he looks back at me, back down, back up. And he gets real close to me, and he goes, I'm going to fuck you up and connect four. <laughs> and then just walks away. And I was like, what? <laughs> Guess yeah. who lost and connect four? That's right. That's right. I did. Mm-hmm. I got fucked up. I, four. I will tell you, though, I like a board game. I like a board game a lot. Yep. Um, Monopoly ruins families, though, so we don't play Monopoly we're anymore. We're going to, uh, we're going to uh, be in Ohio in June, everybody. Um, oh, nice. Are we in Seabus or Cleveland? We're in Seabus. I can't Seabus. wait to get to Cleveland. Well, oh, there it is. Both yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, let's bring. Uh, super, let's see. Super Everybody's coming to Glasgow. Yeah, we're all, we're both doing it. Beth's coming too. And uh, hopefully, my girlfriend will also be there. That's right. Okay. The whole family. That's right. That's right. Um, let's see who we got. James, you got a question for us today, man? Yeah, buddy. I saw you on the uh, May 4th. Great show. 
Do you like do you like doing the smaller venues or do you like the larger ones where it seemed like you got to get involved more in a crowd at the smaller venue? This is a great question, man. Um, I like the money of the big venue. <laughs> that apps <laughs> out, <I> imagine. <laughs> Whatever you're talking about, my experience as a stand-up and as an artist and as a performer, I prefer the small crowd. Because you were saying jokes I've never heard before. You were like, I'm going to start, I'm going to say some jokes, you know, try them out with you guys. If you like them, great. If you don't, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that whole, basically that, this whole weekend has been jokes that I haven't done before. I'm just trying to find new stuff. But, but I, man, I think comedy's better close up. You know, have you, if you've ever seen comedy in one of those huge venues. Which um, I have. Right. You end up watching the screen. Pretty much, because it's so far away that you can't see the mouth move. You know, you're absolutely right. The, the energy of the small if people are on top of each other. The the, the energy doesn't go up; it's it comes right at you. And right. For and I've done from the biggest. I've performed in front of fifty three thousand people with Larry the Cable Guy um, to the small clubs like we are here, and and everything in between. And do you enjoy Raleigh? Like, did, did you like the, the that venue itself, like the way it looked and it was set up for you? I, I like being up there. I like being able to interact with people. I like, like seeing their faces. I like it. I like feeling their energy. So for That's me, I like, smaller, I like the smaller was a riot. Last night, I can't wait for you guys to see oh the clips from last God. night. You, you were my like, you are my favorite comedian by far, and I was just so glad I was able to sit up front and watch you that close okay. and at that small venue. You were front row right to our left, right? Yeah, like, you were the one that told me shut up. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I thought you looked familiar, but you had a you had a baseball cap on in the front row. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. Listen, but, but I love that man because I because what I want my comedy to feel like is I want you to feel like you're watching a buddy of yours just tell stories in your living room. And that's exactly how I felt, brother. And I just wanted to thank both y'all for a great show. And if next time y'all are in this area, I'm definitely coming again. And that was my wife's first comedy show ever. So oh, nice. she she fell in love with comedy. All like she loves comedians, but she's like, now I got to go to more com comedy shows. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate you being there, dude. Love you guys. Thanks, love man. You, Later. Thanks, uh, someone asked about Manchester, UK. Again, we uh, we're are actually going to be there. We're going to be in Manchester yeah. in the fall. So if you're looking for UK dates, just wait. They will be announced hopefully uh, hopefully soon, but it will be in the fall. We will be in a couple different places in the UK. Uh, yes. Yeah. And so I'll tell you guys, like, that's what I want my stand-up to feel like. I want it to feel like, like we're having a conversation yeah. and you're just listening to somebody you know tell stories that's and that's why i like a smaller venue man because you can keep it the comedy and the art intimate and i think that's where the fun it's the best it's for me personally yeah. for me uh, personally somebody said tucson uh not tucson but we do uh tempe arizona every new year's um so we will be there in december can you read that for me yeah uh how long did you do comedy before you could earn a living at it that's i'll tell you something like it i really equate it in most people, okay, in the age of TikTok and all that stuff, it's different. Not necessarily always for the good. In my experience, pre-social media, when people were doing stand-up, yeah, it's like going to med school. It really is. It's the it's like the same amount of time to where you start to figure things out. Yeah. Your first four years of undergrad, you're just you have no idea what's going on. You're just trying to figure things out and figure out what you like and how you do things. Year four to eight, you're going, okay, This I think this is who I am. Now that I know who I am and how I stand and how I move and what my voice sounds like on stage, now how do I write jokes in that voice? And year eight through 12 is when you're like, oh, this is what I say funny. This is who I am. And then you graduate. And so that's what I would say. That's, and when you earn a living is, you know, that's depending on what you feel like you need to do to make a earn a living. But it's going to take 10 years. Now, TikTok is different because people become comedians. But what happens to those people is that it's not TikTok. And you have to go on stage for an hour. 
and people are expecting a certain level of stand-up. I tell the people reach out about TikTok comics all the time. They're like, I could sell this place out. I'm like, yeah, you're going to sell it out one time. And then the people who came are going to be like, why the fuck did I go to that? Yep. So if you're already making money, I would fly under the radar. Yep. And learn how to do what you want to do in a way that people will want to see it. That would be my suggestion to you. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, all right. I'm going to say something about this. You read that. Do you really think Brendan Schaub is good at comedy? The amount of shit he gets, okay, from you people is bizarre to me. First of all, to spend any amount of your energy on another human being like that and let them live rent-free in your head is crazy. So I think he's good at comedy. I think he has come – look, I think he would tell you that first special he shouldn't have shot. But people were throwing money at it. It's the same thing I said, kind of like the advice I gave to TikTok. He gets exponentially better. Like everybody else, stand-up is all about reps. Yeah. But the fact that he gets so much hate for – and he hustles, man. This dude straight up hustles. Yeah. The fact that he gets so much hate is something that you all should really figure out about yourself. Yeah, it's it feels like a self-projecting kind of thing. Like it, it doesn't – yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Do you know who's not sitting around pouring a bunch of energy into hating somebody else? Successful people. Yeah, man. Also, like, it's it, not worth it. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Bag on somebody who has completely switched career paths and taken the time out of Dude. his daily life to try and make himself better at something else that he wants to do. I would look at it like this for Brendan. He reached the top of the game in UFC. Mm -hmm. Whether he was the best fighter of all time, that's like people bagging on the dude who's the twelfth man on the bench in the NBA. Guess what? Twelfth man on the bench in the NBA is still the one percent of the one percent. So if Brendan made the UFC, that's one percent of the one percent. Pay per view fights, okay. all that stuff. That's so yeah. so bagging on, then judging him in there is whatever. And then he switched professions and is in the one percent of the one percent in this profession. I would say instead of bagging on this dude, I might pay attention to some of the shit he does. Yeah, maybe throw some respect on his name. That's all. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, this is right. Any craft is about practice, determination, and heart. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, let's go and say hello. Who are your idols? Oh, okay. Read that one. Who's your idols in comedy, old school and new? You go first. Um, truthfully, because, you know, somebody asked somebody asked this last night. You know, like, who did you grow up, like, being your favorite comic and, and all that. Like, truthfully, I was... I wasn't secluded and raised with just one person's comedy, but it, it's what I saw the most. Like when I saw him on tour with Cable Guy and with Chelsea and all that, like I saw the comics that he would perform with. And still, my favorite comedy coming out of anybody's mouth was his, and that still has just kind of been how it's been for uh, probably over a decade. Is I'll still go see people perform. Don't get me wrong, but there are still not as many people that I find to be as funny as the dude sitting to my right. Like, and that's just, that for me is just a straight up fact. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, like, uh, I, one of my favorite comics right now that I do love, relax with that. Okay. I'll take my comment back. Uh, one of my favorite comics that I'd love to watch right now because my, uh, my girlfriend is very into him is a uh, Hassan Minaj. Yeah. And I, I, his, his specials homecoming King, like his stuff on Netflix, the way how his whole special Nikki Glazer too. Yeah. Is one continuous story. Like Hassan Minaj starts one spot. Like he starts in one place. And it's a whole, like, it's all, it's one continuous story for an hour. You mean, like, Father of the Year? Like, Father of the Year? Father of the Year, you have different stories in between. His son is just, like, it's it's called Homecoming King, so it talks about his homecoming dance, and it talks about how it leads up to it and what he experienced in yeah, the I days leading up to it. That's what I'm saying. Like, like Baby like, J, if you guys have seen John Mulaney's. Like, it is legit one story that is through an hour, but he has little, you know, intervals within it. No, like. No. Father yeah, of the Year. Right, 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 right. Okay, relax. I already said that you are my favorite comic. Why are you still trying to pick the bone? I'm just out? saying it sounds like he did exactly what I did five years ago. Anywho. Yeah, except oh, except his is except, way more Except Netflix bought his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but the way he tells stories uh, is amazing. And uh, 
the way he also brings like his side of his culture into it. Like he'll he'll at some points stop not speak English and speak in his uh, how he was raised in the is language. He Cubano? No, no, he is not. I think he's Indian. No accent on the Indian. Uh, no, no. You an accent on Cubano? I feel like when I say Cubano, it's not even like an accent. It's just how I'm saying Cubano. Anywho, he's just trying to drag me into a spot where I do a terrible accent. Um, and so, yeah, so I really love his knowledge and I love the way he tells stories and how he brings his his culture in and out of it. Um, yeah, I think it's really uh, enticing. Um, I like Joe Coy stuff. There's just certain things that he says that makes me laugh, like the way he makes fun of his mom or the way that he impersonates his mom making fun of him. That shit makes me laugh really hard. Um, Mickey Glazer is another really funny comic. I'm just trying to think of who we see at the store also. Um, there's a new comic that I really love. Her name is Grace. Um, she opened for you in Madison. She's super funny. She is super funny, and okay. she's a roast battle winner. Um, so those are probably the people that I can think of right now that I am enjoying. Okay. My idols in comedy. I can tell you right now, my favorite comic of all time and my favorite comic right now. This is very easy. I think your favorite comic of all time is Sam Kinison? No. He's in there. Patrice oh, okay. O'Neill. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you something right now. Nobody has ever made me laugh as hard as Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill, I, and I can watch his bits over and over again and laugh. Like, to me, hands down, Patrice O'Neill, Patrice O'Neill, Patrice O'Neill. I would tell you a close second is Cat Williams. Yeah. Cat Williams is on the ridiculous side of fun. There's some skits that he does. Now, that... I, I, I'm not going to put him in new, just all time. Okay. Okay. But touring right now, I would say Joe Diaz, but he's not touring. Yeah. But Joe makes me fucking laugh so much. Yeah. So let's go Joey Diaz and Patrice O'Neill. That would be it from me. Hey, from Modesto, top three podcasts. Hey, man, Joe Rogan and Flagrant. Thank you so much. That's a great company to be in. I don't know what Flagrant is. What's Flagrant's Schultz's. Oh, 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 oh. God. Yeah. Uh, Patrice and Cat. Yeah, everybody is. Cat is right. Like, Cat, let me tell you something about Cat, too. Cat sells tickets. But what makes it more impressive, even more impressive, is that, look, Kevin Hart sells tickets, but he crosses over. He has black crowd and white crowd. Yeah. Cat is selling black tickets and sells as many. Yeah. Which means like he's he's dipping into a much smaller pool and selling as many tickets. He is so fucking funny. Yeah. Good lord. Somebody said, what do you think about Fortune Feimster? Love her. Yeah. She is ridiculously funny as well. Um, her stuff is super great. And also to top it off, she's one of the nicer people that we've met ever. So I, I really enjoy Fortune. Yeah, Jennifer, I'm going to have to – I like both those comics, but neither one cracked my top thousand. I don't know who either of those people are. Gallagher and Henry Cho. Well, I can read, but that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. who either of those people are. Yeah, yeah just not my cup of tea. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kat owns all of the stuff. Yeah, yeah, without a – look at Dave. I would have put my money on you saying Sam Kinison would have lost my money. I love Sam Kinison, but – and I, he's probably second or third. Who's wait? What? Why do I know that name? Dave Pierce. Um, he used to join the Highlands a lot. Mm. What about Robin Williams? Not in my top ten. Not for stand up. Not I, and I, not only not in my top ten. Not even close to my top ten. Yeah. Not 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 my style. The bom- I don't like the bombastic. I never. I appreciate his genius very much and could never do what he did. And I still did not enjoy watching his stand up even a little, although I bet you I would have liked it if I had seen it live. Yeah. Yeah. Lenny Bruce. I love how people say that, but most people just know the name. His last couple of years in comedy, he wasn't even doing real comedy. It was soapboxy stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I, I, not really for me. Again, a groundbreaking comic. I've heard a couple of his jokes. Yeah, not not my thing at all. Uh, so I know I'm gonna just stray away. Somebody said chicken nuggets or chicken tenders. Chicken nuggets. Sorry, I just wanted to answer that question. Yo, neither. 
neither a chicken. Take your fried pigeon and and call it whatever the fuck you want. Chicken nuggets are delicious. Dang, that's not chicken. Uh, whatever it is, it's delicious. It's it's pigeon nuggets. I'm gonna go home and eat some and tag you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat your pigeon nuggets and send oh, them over. Oh, I will. Oh. I will eat my nuggets and be happy. That's a, somebody clip that. I will eat my nuggets and be happy. Yeah, dude. And then yeah. let's take a picture of some dude with his nuts out in line. No, I'm good. Uh, I, Jake says Cosby was a genius. Diddler, but genius. Diddler. Yes. Yeah. And one of the dudes that I watched. Uh, over and over again to figure out how to tell stories. Eddie Murphy also super funny, but guys, not he's not Patrice O'Neill or Cat Williams. He just stopped doing stand up. He well, could have. No, she Chappelle is genius. So he's in my top five. One hundred percent. Pigeon Nuggets. You know what I'm saying? All right, listen. Uh, all right, everybody. Um, let me just say hi. Oh my god. Bro just like left the stream. I think you went to scroll down and you hit leave studio at the same time. Anybody who's ever been on a stream with me, you've seen that happen. How many times where all of a sudden I was just like, Whoa, I don't know where the fuck I am. Yeah, but that usually happened during oh the high life. Yeah, I can see how that would happen during the high life. Cat, how many times does that happen during at our stream? At least ten. Ten or ten more. <laughs> Yeah, I just I try to hit a button. So, I'm like, oh no 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 no. By the way, when the screen goes dark, can you still hear me? No. Oh no, you hit leave studio. You were gone completely from the studio. Uh, so that means so you were like like he was trying to get back in. And he goes, what's going on? Can anybody hear me? What's happened? Like he was just talking into the wall. Like he was just talking into the dark. I was like, they can't hear you, old man. And he was like, why not? I go, you're not. I don't even know why I'm yelling at the camera trying to explain. So it. I got invited into this podcast where I have control of the stream yard too. And the other day I ended the stream in the middle of the podcast. <laughs> See where it says end stream down there? It gives me those options over here too. And on in in the other podcast, not on yours, but in, in the other one that I'm in. But um yeah, I ended the stream in the middle of the shit the other day. That is a dangerous do yeah. you all do you all remember who was on the stream? This is old, old, old school. When I was high and I left what was his name? I left on the stream. Sean. Sean, yeah. Talking. I left For like five hours. I, I left and he I forgot that I hadn't taken him out of the studio. So he was just on my stream going fucking. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, that was amazing. That is ridiculous. Hey, yeah. Jake, now that you're like going with your dad full time and stuff, are we going to get Jake and Josh merch? And when will your merch be on the website? And my merch, uh, my first batch of merch is officially uh, with me on the road. Uh, I am full time now on the road with my dad. So any city you guys are in and any city you see on dates, unless it's like a specific birthday weekend or a weekend that I can't go, I will be there. Um, so Jake and Josh merch is actually a really good idea. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, but yeah. we will have Jake merch separate, Josh merch separate, and now we'll have to think about Jake and Josh merch. I think we should make a shirt that's two, uh, one room, two beds for sure. Yeah, I totally. That's hilarious. Um, and you know, Jake, I hung out with, I hung out with Trevor the other day on a live for quite a while, probably about an hour or so. And I see where you get the still emo thing. What? Thank you. Thank you. Like, it's 100%, like, it's valid. It is accurate. Was it his live? Yeah. It's uh, accurate. Look, me saying that he's still in an emo face is not. Yeah. And, and let's go back to that merch thing because the $70 that you owe your dad, you said, I'll do merch tonight and give it to you. So you're going to sell his merch to give him the money that well, you owe. <laughs> on the road. It's my merch that's here. So I'll, I'll sell my merch and then I'll give him the 70 bucks. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. It'll work out. Um, how are you doing? You good? I'm good. Yeah. Um, I'm in Oklahoma right now, but I'm going back to Denver um, in the July, beginning of August. All right. We should be in Denver soon. I hope so. All We're right. usually in Denver at this point in time of the year. Like it's yeah, usually we'll be there April and May. We'll be in the fall. All right. Good yeah, see we'll you. see y'all soon. Good to see y'all. Bye. Um, 
I don't think his name was Robin Williams. It was Robin, from, who did Bebe's Kids? Robin, but genius. That was right before Bernie Mac came out. But he and Bernie Mac both, to me, were fucking straight up geniuses. But yeah. this dude, Robin, uh, I can picture him in my head. But super fun, super fun. Huh. Um, all right, listen, guys, we got a jet. Does anybody have his? Bernie was a beast for sure. Yeah. Um, Jacob, what's your Instagram? Uh, my Instagram is Jake underscore Wolf. Uh, my TikTok is it's Jake Wolf. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. It was Robin Williams. I don't know, baby. I don't know if we're talking about baby's kids. <sighs> baby's kids were so funny. It, I just don't. Uh, you come to Savannah. Uh, we usually, if every time we go to Georgia, we usually go to Atlanta. Yeah, but I would love to come to Savannah and get. I'd like to see some haunted shit. I'm good. Um, all right. right on that. Ohio dates West comedian Josh for uh, apparently June is where we're in Ohio. I think June in Columbus. Yeah, he played Big Perm in Friday. Was his last name Williams Ray Ray? I don't think so. I like how we're all asking questions like we don't all have the internet right in front Robin of us. Robin Harris, thank you so much. I, you know what I'm saying? Though? I like how we're all asking each other questions, and we're all like, I don't really know. And I'm like, all of us are on something that has internet right now. Somebody look it up. You mean like human beings who used to just discuss things? Yeah, but that's why You can still discuss it and still look it up at the same time so we can all stop going in circles. I'm just saying, like, maybe that's just the, the Gen Z in me, but I don't know. Google it. <laughs> are you Gen Z? Yeah, I'm technically Gen Z, unfortunately. Listen, Some people are like, you're a millennial. I'm like, yo, millennials are fucking 30 now. Like, it makes me laugh. People in my generation think 12-year-olds are fucking millennial. You're like, dude, millennials are old people. Now. Yeah, millennials are 30 to 35. Yeah, like, they're, old. Wow. they're not hip I anymore. am Gen Z, which is unfortunate that I have to be labeled as Gen Z, but I am indeed Gen Z. All right, listen, everybody. We turned off the AC to do this. I'm getting hot as fuck, so <laughs> we're going. But thank you all for joining us. Um, we're going to post this. Um, and uh, we got another, the podcast studio is almost built in my house. Lots of fucking fun things happening, everybody. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. We love you. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Yeah. And, and listen, man, check, check out the videos on YouTube and Facebook. If you are listening to this video, this uh, podcast, you know, download, rate, subscribe, leave a comment. It helps us out a lot. Yep. And um, thank you all so much. Hope to see you guys on the road. If not, we'll see you back here. Okay? Yeah. Can't wait to come to a city uh, near you. Thank you guys again for all the support. Um, if this helps anybody and wants to come to a show, I'm officially opening and featuring for Josh Wolf. Um, so I'm officially doing stand-up comedy by myself on stage. So if that intrigues anybody else to come into a show, come see what the fuck's up. I got some stories to tell. About the guy to my right. He tells so, a lot of embarrassing stories nobody's heard before. Yep. So I figured uh, I figured that's good. So come out. Come say what's up. Thank you, guys. Without any of you, this none of this would be possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Love you guys. Love you. Later. Later. He's going to hit a button twice, and then we're done. Yeah. There we go. Later. Done.